Hello and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Thursdays. This week we're going to zoom into a particular topic, which is business intelligence and reporting. As you all know, with Context Hub and Dash Hub, you can create very nice reports of all the work you've been doing in Trendminer. But sometimes you just want to combine this information with perhaps more financially oriented uh, dashboards or uh, you want to make a raw material balance, for example. And this is already done within BI tools such as Tableau, Power BI, Click or ClickSense uh, and so on. Today, we're going to show you how you can pull the data out of Trendminer into those BI tools so you can get the best of both worlds. You can connect your analyses, all your work in Trendminer with those pre-existing dashboards and get more value by making the sum of the two. We're going to go through all the steps. So we're going to go from the existing view in Context Hub to setting it up uh, and connecting to your Power BI and then creating, just as, as an example, a couple of uh, widgets that show this data in, in action. All right, we're going to use the data set here visible on my screen, which is um, all the generated context items on the autoclaves, autoclave one, two, and three for the last four weeks. You notice that there are some successful cycles, the green uh, elements, some failed cycles, the red elements, and then interim time and some longer maintenance periods. This is the kind of information that will go very well with, for example, raw material information with a particular vendor or with a particular um, lot of raw material, did I have more or less failed cycles, for example? This is the kind of information that you can zoom into by combining the two data sources. Now, to get this data into your BI tool of choice, I want to point you to one very important uh, piece of content, which is our developer portal. On this portal, you will find all information related to all of our APIs that are available. So Trendminer is an open platform. We have APIs that you can consume, and we're going to use that one today to uh, load some data into, uh, into Power BI in this case. So I'm going to load context information. So I'll go into the context API. Um, and here you'll see all the re required information and all the required steps to do what we're trying to do. Obviously, after the first introduction, the first important part is to actually request your credentials. Without credentials, of course, through the security mechanisms in Trendminer, you won't be able to have access to the data. So you have to have um, a level of authorization that allows you to, uh, to, to read the data that's, being, uh, that's going to be used. Today, we're not actually going to load those credentials. I have already prepared that for today. But if you need some help with this step, just reach out to Trendminer. Uh, but as it is a very common step in any web application, I will skip it for now. All you have to do is have your accounts ready and with those credentials, you'll be able to uh, generate the access token that we'll need. Now, before I go into Power BI, I want to um, highlight the, uh, the search that we're going to do. So we're going to execute a particular search for context items based on a number of criteria. The first criterion we will use is the interval filter. So as I mentioned, we want to have the last four weeks worth of data. The second one will be the custom field uh, filter. In this case, we're going to use one of the fields, which is the line that this uh, context item is generated on. We will select three specific lines. Those are the, one we, those are the ones we are interested in uh, and discard all others. So that's why we'll include this filter as well. If you are an admin in Context Hub, you can also look up all this information in the config page. So if you go into config and you want to know, for example, what type of uh, values are allowed for the line item. I will look for that line context field and I will go into configuration, which is where you will see the allowable states. So in this case, line one, line two, line three, those are the three states that we will pick up. Um, so as an admin in context stuff, you can look up all this information as a validation to yourself as well. That being said, let's jump over into Power BI where we'll now load up this data and build a couple of widgets. All right. In this Power BI view, as you can see, it's still empty, uh, but I have already prepared a little bit of data processing. So if we go into the query editor or the data tab and into the query editor, I will take you to the advanced editor because this is where we will actually use uh, those filters that we set up or that we want to use to, uh, to get the right data. So open up the advanced editor and you notice that I have already prepared a couple of steps here. Uh, the most important ones are the fact that we are going to pull Trendminer for this data. So obviously I will need the Trendminer URL. Uh, I will use the endpoint context item search, which you can find in that API documentation. 
and I will include a couple of filters. The first filter, very uh, simple, is the period filter where I zoom into the last four weeks. Uh, if I want other ranges, I can set that up too. So if I want to get the last week, the last four hours, or a specific date range, um, I can include them in this filter. And then finally, I'll add a filter on the line, as mentioned before. So allowable values, line one, line two, line three, those are the ones that I want to filter out. Next to that, I have already prepared a couple of pre-processing steps. If you load the data into um, Power BI for the first time, it will look a little bit different. So let me show you what that looks like. If I go back into one of my previous steps, the first time you load into uh, this data into TrendMiner, you will basically get a list of records. And every record in this list will be one particular context item. I can very easily convert this into a table that then works nicely um, with the expansion of columns. So I expanded that column. Now I already see many more details of my context item. And then finally, I can also expand, for example, the type, which also gives me information into what type each of those context items had as, uh, as additional information available to me. So I can do that with any column that would still be a list or an, a record in this, uh, in this table. As you can notice, I can get quite a bit of information, quite a, quite a large amount of information. So I could include further filters to only select the columns that I really need for my uh, business intelligence report. But in this case, I'm just going to uh, continue from here. So I just did a couple of very basic operations, expanded the data, and now I'm just going to build a couple of widgets to show you what then can be done with this data into, uh, in, in your BI report. To do that, I will just exit out of this uh, query editor uh, and move back to the reporting tab on my Power BI um, uh, workflow instead of the data set. And from here, I can add a couple of widgets uh, that could be interesting to me. All right, in a couple of minutes, we build a simple report in this Power BI dashboard based on the data that we ingested from TrendMiner. So the, uh, the cycle successful and failed, as well as the maintenance items. Uh, and of course, now that this, uh, this view has been set up, I have access to all the typical BI type of filtering capabilities. So if I want to zoom into one particular line, I can see uh, specifically how the data corresponds to one another. So I can now see that, for example, for line one, the amount of successful cycles relative to the amount of failed cycles is lower. So that might be uh, where I uh, spend more resources in the future to make sure this line also performs up to par. That was just a simple example showing you the different steps to take to get data from TrendMiner and your analysis in TrendMiner into your reporting tool of choice, which can be whatever type of business intelligence um, uh, tool you're already using. With our open APIs, you're able to get to that data without any limitations and then build all of the reporting of your liking in the tool of your choice. Um, the resources I mentioned will be linked in the description below. What I showed you today was based on trend under version 2020 R1, but previous and next versions obviously also have an API that is available. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and have fun.